Hey there, welcome to 3D Print Anatomy. I'm your host, Alec, and this week we're going to talk about print surfaces. As consumer 3D printing has developed, so have the build surfaces. And these can be as simple as a sheet of aluminum to as advanced as a laminated sheet of heaters, plates, and specially designed surfaces. So let's take a look at what these various materials are and what they're best suited for. Nowadays, most 3D printers have a heated bed, and they do this by taking a sheet of aluminum and embedding a PCB into it, so that when you run a current through the heated bed, it heats up and the aluminum spreads it. Usually these are mounted with a PCB on the bottom and the flat aluminum on top, and then from here you can apply various adhesives and surfaces to that. Glass, and more specifically borosilicate glass because of its heat transference, is one of the most common forms of bed surfaces for 3D printers. Holtz makers have them with just bare glass, and Lulzbot's and Maker Gears have glass with some other surface on top of it. And by using glass, you ensure you have a super flat surface to start with. And from here you can apply other adhesives or other materials. I like using either a little bit of hairspray if I'm doing ABS, or PVA glue stick if I'm doing PLA or other materials. Some printers, like the Maker Gear series, come with capped on tape on glass. And capped on tape is usually an adhesive that's used to help insulate electronics from heat. But with 3D printing, they actually do the opposite. You, you apply them to the build surface to help disperse the heat evenly across the bed. You can actually print ABS on capped on tape without any adhesive, which is a normally difficult task to do. I still use just a little bit of hairspray to ensure it works, but otherwise you don't need it. Capped on tape is pretty cheap too. You can get a lot for very little, and it's not something you're gonna replace super often. It's pretty resilient. Some printers have a plastic sheet adhered to glass, and this is called PEI. PEI is a type of material that when it heats up, it really sticks to 3D printed parts, but when it cools, it releases without much effort. So Lulzbots have PEI on glass, and with these, you don't need to apply glue stick or any sort of adhesive to get a part to stick. However, with some materials like Ninja Flex or PETG, those parts can stick so well, they kind of weld to the PEI. So in those cases, you would apply glue stick to actually act as a release agent for the print. So the glue stick comes off easy and doesn't tear the PEI from it. One of the least common bed materials is called Gerolite. And Gerolite is glass fiber cloth impregnated with epoxy resins and cured under pressure. Now, these usually come only a couple millimeters thick, but this surface is enough to get nylon to stick to it and not warp, even when it's not unheated. And nylon's pretty notorious for warping if the bed isn't heated and if it doesn't have PVA glue stick. So Gerolite works really well for that, and in fact, Markforge printers come with Gerolite stock. There's also BuildTac and various other adhesive sheaths which you can apply on top of your other bed materials, like glass or aluminum. Now BuildTac is basically a plastic with an adhesive backing, and it has grip on the top of it to actually hold onto the part. What can really take it the extra mile is to get a flex plate. So it is a magnetic sheet that you attach to your bed, and then a spring steel sheet attached to build tag. So you can print a part on there, take it off, and bend it and get the part to pop off, which means you can print ABS and really squish it into the build plate, and normally you'd be worried about it sticking too well. With the flex plate, you just take it off, flex it, and the part comes off without issue. Very occasionally, you will find printers with a plastic print bed. And these usually come with some sort of adhesive to apply on top of them, like a specially cut sheet of painter's tape to go on top of it, or a piece of build tag, or something like that. Now, I printed on these without any of those surfaces, and it worked, but occasionally I would get prints that would stick a little too well, and in one scenario, I got a print to weld to it to the point I just had to buy a new sheet of bed material. And that about covers it. Now there are other build materials out there, but usually those are proprietary and specific to either that printer brand or that printer model, to the point that there's just too many to list off. So hopefully you enjoyed learning a bit more about the different bed materials on various 3D printers, or even the ones specifically on your 3D printer. Don't forget to stay tuned for more episodes of 3D Printer Anatomy. I'm your host Alec, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.